Joel Tremblay as we begin bracket play at the 2024 Naga Cup. We're in Pearland, which is a suburb of Houston. We're about uh, 15 to 20 miles south of uh, Houston right now and a very good field. This looks more like a baseball field, I think, than a softball field based on all that room that they have in foul territory. This is going to be our first bracket game of the afternoon. It is featuring the number 17 Los Angeles Rebels against the number 16 Austin Yas. Y-A-S is what they're called. Uh, we've already seen Austin Joel uh, once for today. Uh, they uh, were not victorious, but they are in the middle of the bracket. Uh, if they're the 16 playing a 17, that means that there likely are 33 teams that, they're, that are competing. But this is the game that we have right now. Uh, they're exchanging lineup cards and talking about the other ground rules that need to be addressed. And as you mentioned, this is our first game of bracket play. Not too much changes with the games, except that instead of coin, using a coin toss to determine the home team, the higher seeded, seeded team, which is the Austin Yass, will be the home team. They are the number 16 seed. And then the Rebels will be the visiting team. We have the lineup for the Austin Yass right now because they were on this field. The Rebels had to come over from another field and just got here a few minutes ago to get this game going. So we are working to get their lineup. Yeah, one of the things that they have to compensate for here is all the traffic because there's a great deal of traffic in Houston, no matter in the Houston area, no matter what time of the day. And this being a Saturday is, is no different. So until we get the Los Angeles lineup, we will uh, tell you the numbers. Those of you that are watching and our Rebels fans will know who these players are. And we're glad that you are with us here for this game this afternoon. The next game that we will have, which will immediately follow this one will be a game between the number eight seed and the number 25 seed. And the umpire over here, again, make, making sure that everything is the way it needs to be, is about to, he's looking for another umpire. He's looking for our umpire in chief, um, uh, Marcy Colley. The other rule change from the uh, pool play is that these games will go 60 minutes instead of 55. So you have 60 minutes before there won't be any new inning. And of course, pool play games could in theory have ended in a tie. This, these games cannot because we need a winner to know who advances in the winner's bracket. It is a double elimination tournament, so these are all these teams' first games. When they lose, they are usually done for the day, and then they would be able to play uh, tomorrow, and you're not out of the tournament until you have two losses. Well, we have the LA Rebels lineup. And we will do our best on this because I'm having trouble reading it. So I'm going to let you try to decipher that because your eyes are better than mine. But anyway, they'll bat lead off is number 32, and he will be followed by number 18. And Rebels taking their warm-up swings. And the warm-up tosses are complete. And we are set to start this game. Yep, you're having trouble with it as well. So sorry about that. We just can't read what their lineup is. We've got the third of the three carbon sheets, and it's just very faint. And the first pitch of the ball game is a pitch outside for a ball, and your game is underway. And we're getting some of the batters to help us here, so that was... Uh uh, Landon. This is Landon. Hits a fly ball out into right center field, and the catch is made, and that's out number one on the second pitch of the ball game. The pitcher for Austin is Mitchell Bussey. And this is going to bring up, I believe, uh, number 18, Frist. And the first Chris bats from the right side. You know what we should do? We should ask these platter as they come to get a bat what his name is. Because they don't have them on their on their uh, uniforms, they only have the Rebels on their uniform, white with yellow trim. And this pitch is grounded to the shortstop, and it takes a bad hop over the shortstop's glove and on into left center field for the first hit of the ball game. And this is number 91. Looks like maybe Trey. Third base coach ambling down to hit the third base coaching box and here's the first pitch and it is a ball number nine is on deck the 
next pitch is lined off the third baseman's glove and on into left field for a hit. And the runner at first on his horse gets to third easily. First and third with one out. And that'll bring up number nine. 23. Your name and the first pitch is lined into left field for a hit. Name? L.A. is on the board. Yeah. It's a run scoring single. That's the first run of the game. And it is runners at first and second. Brian Joseph, the batter. Him, I know. And the first pitch to Brian is outside. Runners at first and third, and one out, and there's a fly ball hit into right field. Right fielder coming on. The ball drops in front for a hit. Runners at first and second had to hold, and so it'll be a single, and the bases will be loaded. And the batter is 23. This is Joel. And Joel takes the first pitch for a ball. Here's the next one. He swings and lines one into left center field. That is down for a hit. Fielded on one hop by the left center fielder. And on the play, another run comes across as Trey scores the second run of the game. The bases will still be loaded. It's two to nothing for L.A. And I think this is going to be Mickey coming to the plate. Mickey or Mikey? He wears, it uh, looks like, number 23, 33. And he has a chance to add to his team's early lead. It's 2 to nothing. The bases are loaded. And there's a grounder to third. He'll step on third for one out, and they'll throw to home, and the runner is out! So the inning ends on a ground ball to the third baseman. DeWitt Myers stepped on third, then followed the runner who was on third trying to score. Made the throw just in time. The putout will go five unassisted for the first out and 5-2 for the second out. Two runs did score in the first inning for the L.A. Rebels, and at the end of the half an inning, it is the L.A. Rebels 2, Austin Yass coming to bat here on the Cloud Sports Network. And we will take some time during these changeovers to tell you about our sponsors, both national and local sponsors from here in Houston. Uh, this game is brought to you by Molson Coors, where celebrity diversity, equity, and inclusion isn't just a moment, it's a movement. That's why International Pride Softball is proud to recognize Molson Coors as more than just a sponsor for the 2024 International Pride Softball Naga Cup. They're a partner. And while we don't have quite all the names of the Rebels, we're going to continue to work on that. We can tell you that they got this far by being one and two throughout the tournament so far in pool play. They lost a game 6-13 to to the Dallas Flatline, then beat the Orlando Unicorns 15-13, to then lost to the Fort Lauderdale South Florida United 10-18. to We have seen the Rebels many times. This is the first time we have, well, actually the second time today, but the first time since they formed. The Austin Yas is one of the newest B teams in IPS, International Pride Softball. Eric, Eric Straker, DeWitt Myers, and Dallas Reed, the first three batters up for Austin. Hello. In the, uh, <laughs> in the bottom of the first. So a couple interesting things going on here, uh, Rich, compared to our last games and for those viewers who saw them. One, both pitchers are wearing masks, which we noted was odd in the first two games that they didn't have pitchers wearing masks. In this A-B division, these balls are hit hard. Yes. The other thing that was pointed out to be by one of our uh, crack tech teams. Line drive into left field. That ball is down. It's going all the way to the corner. Eric going opposite field. He takes a turn at second and decides to hold. Uh, the ball comes in. It's rather wide of third base, but the third base coach, Brittany, held Eric at second base, and it's a leadoff double to start the game for Austin Yass. 
One of the reasons that was a long run for the left fielder is that this team with their 10 players is only playing three outfielders. They have five infielders in addition to the pitcher and the catcher. You can sort of see the middle infielder right there behind the runner at second base playing a sort of rover spot or fifth infielder. Ah, I didn't see that because the umpire has me blocked. So it's five infield, three outfield. And there's a infield, looping fly outfield. ball in the left center field for a hit. Straker will take the turn to third and then go back to third base. And it'll be runners at first and third with nobody out. Dallas Reed, the batter. That kind of hitting is just what you do. Drop little things in that somebody might have gotten if there were four outfielders. Yeah, it was, uh, it was Lance Elliott Turner over there at the computers who caught that they had five in the infield for us. There's a fly ball high into left field. Ball is trouble, and the ball bounces for a hit. The throw will come into third base, and Straker will score, and it'll be runners at first and second. And nobody out. 2-1 our score. Kobe Bilski, the cleanup hitter from Austin. And he swings and hits one high and deep to left field. And that ball's got some carry. And it is out of here for a three-run homer. One of the things that does not change going into bracket play is the number of home runs. So we are presumably still with AB on the B number, which is three per team. That's the first one from Austin. They have two more that they can hit. After you get to three, your fourth ball over the fence is an inning ending out. Rusty Leger, the batter. And Aaron Thompson moves into the on-deck circle. Here's the pitch, and that's grounded to third on one hop over to first. And time out number, out number one. And the aforementioned Aaron Thompson will bat next. He is the left center fielder for his team, and he wears number nine. And the first pitch to him swings at the first pitch and grounds one to second base. One big hop and on to first for the out. James Maltzon will be the next batter. He's the catcher. So four runs in in the inning, and then the next two batters swing at the first pitch and hit ground balls, one to third, one to second. And the first pitch to him is a strike call. One ball, two strikes. And the next one, swing and a grounder to second on a hop. And on to first, and the inning is over. Four runs, four hits, and no one left on base. We go to the top of the second. Our new score now is the Austin Yaz, and I can't tell you what it stands for. Four, and the, Long Be uh, the Los Angeles Rebels, two, on the Cloud Sports Network. So for most of the games, we've seen the 10th defense person playing a fourth outfield. Usually, you're going to score that 7, 8, 9, 10 across the outfield. People do this differently with a fifth infielder, but most people are going to call the person behind second base the 10th fielder. So we go to the top of the second here. Field number one at Shadow Shadow Creek in Pearland, Texas. My first pit, my first visit ever to Pearland. And in the uh, top of the second inning, number 83 will lead off. And, and for he'll be the followed y by number one. And for the YAS Riaz, um, their trip to this game in the bracket was a loss to the San Francisco Fury, uh, six to eighteen, and then they beat the Dallas Rhinos, sixteen to six, and then lost to the LA Thunder in the game that we broadcast, eighteen to three. That's a high fly ball that is foul. Long run for the left fielder. There's a lot of space out there, but he was not able to uh, catch the ball. So it's a long strike, and it is a ball and two strikes. And the next one is hit in the air to center field. Right center fielder ranges over to his right and makes a running behind a running catch for the out. Yeah. 
And the sun may start to be a factor here, Rich. It was yes. very overcast earlier. We're seeing a lot of blue skies, clouds dispersing a little bit here. We thought we were getting some rain, and maybe we, we still will, but that, looking nice right now. That happens later. Hopefully by the time we have concluded our play for the day. And that is a walk. Number 35 will bet, and you know him. His name is Marcus. All right. Marcus, that's from the right side. There is a runner at first base, and they're going to have a courtesy runner for him. And I believe this is the leadoff batter. His n uh, number is 83. And again, courtesy runners, you can swap out any runner you want to with somebody else on your lineup card one time an inning. If we see a second one, it's usually because there is somebody who has been given an accommodation of a runner at first. There may be some question is, is the, if this team may be batting out of order because the scorebook person for Yas, her name is Brittany, has come out and she has asked the umpire. And so now they're calling the person who is keeping book for Los Angeles. So we'll see what's happening. But that's got to be, well, apparently whatever they had, whatever they had is fixed. They got an out. They did bat out of order. So that's an out. In my book, it'll go out of order. And, and here is Marcus. From what I can tell from our lineup card, uh, the person who was supposed to bat was 42, and the person who bat and took that walk was number one. Was number one. So, two out now. And here's the pitch to Marcus, swung on and hit in the air to left center field. And the left center fielder comes on to make the catch, and that ends the inning. Three up, and technically three down. We go to the bottom of the second. It is still the Austin Yoss four and the LA Rebels two here on the Cloud Sports Network. Another one of our sponsors is Berkshire Hathaway. At Berkshire Hathaway, diversity, equity, and inclusion isn't a goal. It's an investment. At a time when many large companies are cloning, closing down their DEI initiatives, Berkshire Hathaway is investing in the long term, recognizing the importance of these initiatives worldwide. That's why International Pride Softball is proud to have them as a sponsor for the 2024 Naga Cup. Here in the bottom of the, or top of the, bottom of the second inning, Mitchell Bussey, the pitcher, is going to be the leadoff hitter. And he'll be followed by Nick Batesol and Cody Eden. At the end of the last inning, it looked like Landon for the L.A. Rebels was back in the on-deck circle. So I think they are both these teams are batting 10, Rich. They yes. can bat up to 12, but it seems like both these teams have elected uh, just to bat 10 and keep the other folks as subs. All right, here's the next pitch to Bussy. He swings and lines one deep to left field. That ball's got some carry. That ball is over the fence. It's a home run. That's two. That while he's not unhappy to have a home run, that's probably not what the coach and team wanted. That was a line that went over as a line drive. It wasn't like he was trying to kill it because. When you only have three home runs to use, using one as a solo shot is not usually your strategy. Correct. Here's Batesel. And Nick swings and bounces one to the third baseman, bobbles the ball, and has no play. It's fan ambiance. Rambunctious fans. <laughs> Here's Cody Eden. And the first pitch to him is inside for a ball. So a home run to start the inning, and then the next batter, Batesel, reaches on an error, and that pitch is a ball, ball three. And 
and that pitch is a ball. Ball four to be runners at first and second. Back to the top of the order. And here's Eric Straker, who singled. He scored his team's first run in the bottom of the second. You feel good? Yes, sir. You got a little water on your neck? It's got me all dripping wet. Dripping wet. There's going to be... Looks like we have a runner at second base for Batel. And the first pitch to Straker is a ball. DeWitt Myers is on deck, and that pitch is inside for a ball, ball two. <laughs> Interesting choice on the runner, unless somebody's really injured. With nobody down, more than likely you could just move that player over slowly. But Striker walks. The bases are loaded. There's still nobody out. And DeWitt Myers, the batter, he singled and he scored ahead of the three-run homer by Bilski in the first inning. And he has a chance to add to his team's lead, which is 4-5-2. to five to two. He skies one out into left center field. Left center field coming in. The ball did not have much carry on it, but he comes in and makes a catch. He falls down as he does. But on the play, Batesel scores. Sacrifice fly for Myers. The other two runners held Eden at third at second, rather, and Straker at first, and here is Dallas Reed. And he hits one in the air to center field. Left center fielder has the play, has the catch. Runner at second tags, goes to third. They throw back to third and not in time. It was close, but not in time. So that's the second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Kobe Bilski, who hit a three-run homer in the first. There's a fly ball in the right field, right center field, hit rather well. The ball is dropped in the outfield by the right center fielder. Straker scores behind Eden. Two runs come across. There's an overthrow back to the uh, pitcher that is got beyond the catcher, and Bilski is going to come all the way around and score. So without benefit of a hit. An outfield error and an infield error, and that allowed Bilski to come all the way around the score. And there is a fly ball headed in the right field, and that ball drops foul. So if my math is correct, I have five runs in in the inning. I have five runs in as well, and just in case they're wondering, even if you don't score those as errors, an inside-the-park home run does not count for the home, home run total. Those are only balls over the fence of which you can only hit three. So the Yaz still have one more they can put over the wall. Here is Rusty Leger. Who, it's the first pitch foul. That next pitch is a ball. Rusty grounded the third in his first at-bat. Team is added to its lead. That pitch is a ball. No, it's a strike called. I didn't even see the umpire throw his arm up. I so heard. that is a strike three. It's a called third strike, and the inning is over. Five more runs do come across for the Austin Yaz here in the bottom of the second. We go to the top of the third, and now our score is the Austin Yaz nine and the Long Los Angeles Rebels two, two here on the Cloud Sports Network. And you mentioned, I agree with you, I didn't see, see a call there. I heard something that sounded like strike. You can see a lot of the umpires doing things a little differently. Some, there's usually some sort of yell or <sighs> for the strike, but usually you see that fist go up in some yeah. fashion. And I didn't see that. Not or even uh, some of the uh, more active umpires like to get up there and pull it out like a punch out. But And you're well aware of one of them, the late Mike Groby. The late Mike Groby. And so right now we have this as the, again, uh, just scoring check, the Austin Yass 9 and the LA Rebels 2. Mitchell Bussey takes the mound here to start the top of the third. His team has staked him to a seven-run lead. And this is Landon, who flied to right center in his first at bat. Landon wears number 32. Uh, 
And the first pitch to the left-handed batter is inside for a ball. And the next delivery is a strike call. Two balls, two strikes. Quickly pitching, and there's a ground ball to the second baseman. All over to first, and that's the in, that's the out. Bates hold to Eden, and that's first out here in the third inning. And that'll bring up Frist, number 18. A little tight over there on that play. It looked like the, uh, the runner was hoping they could call that he bobbled it, but it looked pretty clean. He did get his foot on the bag. There's a line drive out in the left center field, and the left center fielder uh, hardly had to move at all. That's Aaron Thompson out there. He had maybe ranged a couple of steps to his uh, right and makes the catch, and that is out number two. And that'll bring up 91 who got on on a base hit in the first inning, and he hits a fly ball out of the park. No. No. No? It wasn't a home run? No. I, oh, wow. <laughs> Correct me on that. What? So we, did, we had a single. It was a line drive single out into left field, and uh, uh, so I think it's Trey is at first base. Now that ball is hit high and deep to left, and that definitely is a home run. That hit a few cars, too. And that is, I believe, the Rebels' first home run. We'll see if they can uh, get a little bit warm, warmed up here. You feel a little bit for the Rebels. Um, what sort of happened for most of the teams is pool play finished around 1 o'clock after the 12 o'clock game. They probably got some lunch, and then these Rebels had to switch fields, which isn't easy. Brian Joseph hits a ground ball. Uh, pitcher tried to make the play, but it caroms to the shortstop, and he makes the play. 1-6-3 on the putout, and the inning is over. Two runs score on the home run uh, by number 9, and that is the end of the top of the third. Our score is now 9-4 in favor of Yostin Yas here on the Cloud Sports Network. And our Houston sponsor for the third in inning is Kiki, calling all fierce faces and fabulous souls. If you're looking for an ultra-modern nightclub experience, then you, ha then you want a Kiki at Kiki, Houston's premier LGBTQ nightclub experience. Kiki has elevated Houston's nightlife with vibrant entertainment, friendly bartenders, and modern design. Come get your Kiki on at 2409 Grant Street in Houston, or visit them on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, at Let's Kiki Houston, all one word. That's L-E-T-S-K-I-K-I-H-O-U-S-T-O-N. Let's have a key. Lock the door. And a quick reminder for those of you watching our broadcast on Facebook, please tag your friends, tell your family, get some more viewers to watch these, this great softball. Um, it's really a pleasure for friends and family to be able to see uh, people play. It's not something they usually get an opportunity to do, which is why we're glad to bring you this coverage. And tell us if you have some shout-outs or anything like that that you'd like, uh, and we'll try to get them on the broadcast. Aaron Thompson is leading off here in the bottom of the third. His team leads 9-4. He lines one into right center field. That ball is going to get down between the outfielders. Fielded by the right fielder who bobbled it, allowing Thompson to get the extra base. And it's runner at second base and nobody out to start the bottom of the third. It is a single and then an error on the right fielder for the bobble. And that will bring up James Maltzon, who grounded out to second base in the first inning. And the first pitch to him is swung on and bounced to the shortstop. No advance by the runner at second. Uh, Maltzon does not run particularly fast, so they were able to get the out at first base. The uh, shortstop wanted to make sure that the runner at second base, Thompson, was not going to stray any further off the bag than he had. So it's one out, one on, and Mitchell Bussey, the pitcher, the batter. And he swings and lines one down the left field line and foul. run in this game. It was a solo shot. This one is hit in the air into center field. Left center fielder comes on and makes the catch. No tag 
by the runner at second. Nick Basil, the batter. Reached on an error in the first inning, or in the uh, second inning, and scored a run. Getting more and more people starting to fill in behind us. There's a line drive in the left center field for a base hit. That is going to plate a run. And the other runner goes to second as the ball went all the way to the fence. Runner at second now hits to third, and he will be there standing up. And, Rich, I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but right now the way the Astros are hitting is really exploiting this defensive setup that uh, the L.A. Rebels have. A lot of those balls would be easier to get to. They're hitting the gaps well, and if you think about how four people would be deployed in that outfield, a lot of those would have been either caught or singles. Cody Eden walked and scored. He has another runner in scoring position. One run has scored in the inning. And there is a liner to the second baseman, and that ends the inning. However, one more run does score for the Yas. We go to the top of the fourth, and our new score is now the Yas 10 and the Rebels 4 on the Cloud Sports Network. So one of our uh, Hall of in the AFCSL is Jeff Prod, who operates the scoreboard for the San Diego Padres and is a purveyor of fun facts. Uh, we have a fun fact for you that these L.A. Rebels were the World Series champions in B at the 2019 Gay Softball World Series in Kansas City. I think if I remember correctly, we did that game, and I think they beat the, the Austin Fusion. Kansas City was a great World Series. Uh -huh. And for those that don't know, this year's World Series is going to be in Las Vegas in October when the temperature isn't as hot. And this is number 23. This is Joel leading off in the top of the fourth, and he takes the first pitch for a ball. Pitcher not happy with that call, but unlikely to get it changed. There's a foul ball to the right side and over the fence. The next delivery is swung on and hit in the air to left center field. It's got some carry, but the left center fielder was able to make the catch right in front of the warning track of what would be the warning track, and that's out number one. That ball carried a lot further than I thought it was going to, Rich. I don't know if the wind has changed a little bit. I still feel like it's blowing a little bit from... Uh, right to left? Right to left here and towards us, but... Might be doing something else that's up there. tomorrow. 33 the batter. We're looking at a southeast wind across this area now, ahead of a front that's coming later on tonight. And that next pitch is outside, and it's a walk. And this is number 83. There'll be a runner at uh, for the for Joel. Looks like it could be Trey running at first base. And the first pitch to 83 is a ball. And now a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Here's a swing and a fly ball hit a foul and down the left field line and out of play. Two and two. So, again, in this game, you're allowed to have a courtesy foul. So that, as a third strike, as the foul was not an out, he gets one more, but the next foul, foul ball will be an out. And here's the pitch to him. Swing and a fly ball hit deep to left field. That ball's got some carry, and out of here. 
another home run for Los Angeles. And it'll be a two-run homer. So now it is 10-6. And number one bats now with number with Marcus on deck. There's a fly ball hit out in the left field. And I think that ball is off the base of the fence. So it's a double. And so that is two home runs for each team. So they each have one left. And if we were Carl Ravitch, we'd be yelling at him for not getting the third. Here's Marcus, and then we go back to the top of the order. Marcus, the 10th batter in the order, and he hits a ground ball off the shortstop's glove. They will have no play. Under at second thought briefly about trying to make it to third, but realized there was no reason to make another out right there with something going in this inning now. Landon is 0 for 2. He bats with a runner at runners at first and second. Still just one out. And the first pitch to the leadoff batter is a strike call. And there's a swing and a ground ball into right field for a base hit. One run will score. Ball comes back into the infield. No further advancement by Marcus. He'll hold at second base. So it'll be first and second. A run scores. It's the third run in the inning. And runners at first and second for this batter, number 18, who hits one in the right center field. The catch is made. No advancement by the other runners. And that is out number two. And we'll bring up 91. That's Trey. And that's two down and two on and three in, which means that Trey is the tying run at the plate. Score is 9-7. Ten seven, And the next one. Swung on and hit up the middle and into center field. That ball is going to get down, and it's going to travel. It hits the base of the fence. Marcus scores. Landon scores. Two runs have scored, and it's now 10-9. Runner at second base, two out, and six in in the inning. One, two, and there's a base hit in the left field. Ball is bobbled out in left field, and this will allow the runner to score, and the batter winds up at second base. One, two, three, four, five, six runs in in the inning. And that's going to bring up Brian Joseph, and with that, they will have flipped the lineup and batted around this inning. 10-10 our score. Brian Joseph is singled, and he has grounded out pitcher to shortstop to first base. Here's the next one. That is chopped back to the uh, pitcher. He thought he had a runner coming to second base, but no. The pitcher then got message that you need to throw to first. He does. Joseph is out 1-3, and that ends the inning. They batted around, and they scored six times here in the uh, fourth inning, we go to the bottom of the fourth. Our score is tied at 10. And our sponsor here in the fourth inning is USGSN. The United States Gay Sports Network invites you to come out and play. USGSN is America's largest LGBTQ plus sports directory that highlights every league and tournament in the country. If you want to find a league or tournament by and for the LGBTQ plus community and its allies, then head over to USGSN.com. The network currently features 930 LGBTQ plus leagues, 44 different sports in 42 states and 94 cities. Visit USGSN.com and follow them on all of your favorite social media platforms with the tag at USGSN. In the bottom of the fourth, it'll be the leadoff batter, Eric Straker. And DeWitt Myers and Dallas Reed will follow. Let's 
Straker on the afternoon has walked, he has singled, and he has scored twice. A defensive change has been made. 59 is coming in for uh, the Rebels, and he will replace Marcus as the catcher. And Eric waits for the first pitch here to start the bottom of the fourth. He swings and bounces one to the shortstop. Backhanded on two hops and throw to first is high, but out. Shortstop had him played well, was already moving into the hole there before that ball was even really hit. And he can afford to play a little bit further into the hole because of the five-man infield. Here is DeWitt Myers. He has singled and scored, hit a sacrifice fly and drove in a run. And he lifts one in the air to shallow left field. Coming on the left fielder, and he makes the catch. A diving catch at that. And that's out number two. We are working here at Cloud Sports on our amazing play graphic, and that one definitely would have gotten it. And that'll bring up Dallas Reed. Singled and scored and hit a fly ball to the left center. He is one for two with a run scored. And the uh, first pitch to him. Swung on and hit foul to the left side. Two outs and nobody on in a 10-10 contest. There's a ground ball or a liner right back to the pitcher, makes the stab, and then just tosses the ball over his head and... That is the inning. Three up and three down. We go to the top of the fifth. We're tied at 10 on the Cloud Sports Network. And after rallying for six to tie up the game in the top of the fourth, the Rebels showing some leather there in that inning. And they did exactly what they needed to do. They rallied and got the tie and then held the uh, Yas to nothing in the fourth inning. And there weren't too many pitches either. Now, always impressive to see a pitcher make that play with the hard hit ball right back to him, but... I was ready to tell you how that ball out to left field was another example of what happens when you don't play for outfielders, and their left fielder proved that he can pull it off. Exactly. And so with the Rebels having batted around in the fourth inning, that's going to let Joel lead off this inning as he did the fourth. On the day he is singled and he is flied to left. First pitch to Joel, swung on on the first pitch and lifts one high to center field. Right center fielder is over and makes the catch, one out. And here is 33, Mikey. one for two. Swung on and grounds one in the left center field for a base hit. Going after the first pitch and bouncing it through uh, the hole vacated, or it, the hole that is left between the second base bag and the shortstop. And that'll bring up number 83, who has flied to right and homered. And he hits one deep to left field. Left fielder jumps in, the ball hits his glove, hits the top of the fence, and over the fence it goes. And he's just, he is just angry right now. And so we're hearing from Roman is that is a, does not count as a home run over the fence, but is a four-base award. You do get 
if let's say we weren't counting home runs, that does get you everything. It didn't hit the ground. It's off the bat, the fielder's glove. Usually when you see that play, it's because they're climbing the fence, not so far from the fence. But I have never seen that before. I have not, but I just heard the Blues say exactly what Roman told us, which is that is a four-base award and not a home run. So if you're tracking this at home, the Rebels still have one more. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Rebels still have one more home run over the fence that they can hit. That's Rusty Leger out in left field. He'll be buying drinks for his team tonight. There's a grounder to shortstop and on to first, and that's the out. Out number two here in the top of the fifth. Two runs have scored in the inning. It is now 12 to 10. The Rebels over the Oz. The batter will be the uh, man who just came in to take Marcus's place. This is number 59. And he hits one high and deep to left field. It's over the left center fielder's head to the fence. And it'll be a double for number 59. You know, Rich, I don't know if we can, we can ask Roman, but my guess is going to be that that play will be the most viewed few seconds of Cloud Sports Network coverage ever. <laughs> it did happen once before during one of our games in uh, Vegas. There's a ground ball into left field for a base hit by Landon. A run roll score as 59 comes motoring around third. He's up, he's up in the inning, and that the inning will continue. Third run in the inning, 13-10 to 10 on the single by Landon, and that'll bring up 18. And the first pitch to him is swung on and bounced beyond the third baseman's reach. The play is made from short to second and safe. That same play happened in uh, 2022 in Vegas. And you see the again. And so Roman is telling us that that was not the first time that sort of four-base award has happened. It happened in 2022 in Las Vegas in the C Division coverage. Trey lifts one into left field. Leger is back, and he makes the catch. The uh, inning is over. However, three runs did come across, two of them on that weird play where the ball hit off the left fielder's glove, hit the top of the fence, and bounced beyond the fence for, what did you call it, a four-base award. So we go to the bottom of the fifth, and the score is now the L.A. Rebels 13 and the Austin Yaz 10 here on the Cloud Sports Network. Cody Bilski, Kobe Bilski, and Rusty Leger, and Aaron Thompson will bat in the bottom of the fifth. And I'm not sure how close we are, but again, this game is going to go 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, we'll probably hear a beep go off somewhere, and that will mean no new inning, but we will finish whatever inning we are in. 13 to 10 are score. Re Rebels winning. First pitch to Bilski is a ball. And it sounds like we have 13 minutes left. And the next one swung on, and there's a, I can't find the ball. There's a ground ball to the middle infielder. Makes the play at first. As I said, I'm going to put that 10-3 on the put out. And here is Leger. Grounded the third, called out on strikes, 0 for 2. And he has just one thing on his mind right now, I think. Here's the next pitch on 2-1. There's a line drive in the left center field. That ball is going to get down, and it's going to roll to the fence. And Leger gets a double, and he is the one-out base runner here in the bottom of the fifth. And I'm going to file that under everything's a trade-off because that ball's probably a single with four outfielders, but the first one would have been a hit if they hadn't had five infielders. That's right. Aaron Thompson, the better.
grounded to second. Takes a strike. Single and then and then advanced on an error and that pitch is foul down the right side. Josh Magdalene moves into the on deck circle and it looks like he's going to bat for James Maltine. Here's the next delivery, and that is very high. Now, that pitch looked illegal to me. It did not land, however, as far inside as I thought it was going to. There's a fly ball right out into left center field. Left fielder ranging over to his left makes the catch. Out number two, Leger holds at second base. And now there's an overthrow, and Leger will get to third. Didn't hit the cutoff, man, and that allows for the base runner to move up. And Josh Madeline will bat. Interesting choice to risk that with two down, however. I mean, it looked far enough away it wasn't going to be close. But with two down, there's no wild pitches or anything in softball. So there's really not a way to score him anyway other than a hit. That's right. All right, here's Josh Madeline, the pinch hitter. That's for the first time today. He will likely stay in the game and be the catcher when they go to the top of the sixth inning. Madeline tries to get Leger home from uh, third base. That's an important run. Well, they're all important from here on out. It is 13 to 10, and Madeline walks. So that'll bring the tying run to the plate. This is Mitchell Bussey, who already has one of the home runs that was hit over the fence. So if you can, do you use your last home run to tie this up, Rich? I would. Not just be, just pitch. because there's two out. Here's the next one. There's a line drive caught by the third baseman. The inning is over. We go to the top of the sixth. 13-10 in favor of the Rebels here on the Cloud Sports Network. A little bit of a tale of two games, Rich. The Austin Yass were scored four and then five. We're up 9-2 after two innings. Have only scored one run since with two innings with no runs. Meanwhile, the Rebels, only two for the first two innings, but turned it on there in the fourth and again in the fifth. Now up 13-10. to 10. The Yaz will get their last at bats, even if time expires uh, during the first half of the of the inning when the Rebels are up. So, as I suspected, Josh Madeline will remain in the game, and he will play behind the plate. And um, the Rebels come to bat. Number nine, their cleanup batter will lead off. Hello, Brian. Brian, what is nine's name? Huh? What is batter's name, number nine? What's Gage. his name? Gage? Gage. First name or last name? First. Okay, thank you. So Gage will lead off here in the top of the se uh, sixth inning. He wears number nine, and the first pitch to him is lined over the shortstop's glove, and on into left center field. The ball goes to the fence as the left center fielder had trouble coming up with it, and Gage is going to motor all the way to third base. If as a single, and then an error on the outfielder, and it'll bring up Ryan Joseph. There's a fly ball hit out into right center field, and the ball bounces in front. Of the uh, right center fielder, Dallas Reed, and on the play, Gage will score. His team now has a four run lead. It is now 14 to 10. And we'll bring up 23, Joel. Takes the first pitch for a strike called. And here's the next one. Swung on and hit up the middle and into the uh, outfield. A diving depth by the right center fielder. It goes all the way to the fence. Brian Joseph comes around third. He will score. Joel comes into third, and he will hold there. Oh, 
I don't think he got his glove on it. Didn't look like it uh, from the single. So it'll go as a triple. And we'll bring up number 33, Mikey. Two runs have scored. It's making the job a little more difficult for Yas. And the first pitch is a ball. And here's a fly ball hit out into left field. The ball is off the fence. Leger gets the ball in. It'll be a long single for Mikey, but another run scores on the base hit as Joel scores. And that'll bring up number 83. And the first pitch to him is a pitch for a ball. The next one is a strike called. It's two and two. And that pitch is a ball. You can you want to read your thing. I was just going to mention that you know this game is probably going to go over as whatever happens, the Austin Yaz are going to get their chance in the bottom of the sixth inning. After that, we will quickly reset and bring you the next game on this field, which is scheduled to start at 3.35, probably going to be running a little late, and that is going to be the Texas Force versus the Long Beach Tricky Sticks. First time we've seen the Force over here. Mm -hmm. This will be our second game with the Tricky Sticks. There's a grounder, third baseman. Steps on third for one, over to second for two. So they get the double play, five unassisted on the first out, and then 5-4 for the second out. And one more note on that upcoming game with the force and the tricky sticks. A little more dis uh, disparity in the seeds on that one. <coughs> Ground ball deep in the hole at shortstop. Shortstop comes to second base in time. And the inning is over. However, three more runs did score for the Rebels here in the top of the sixth. They scored two in the first, two in the second, six in the or two in the third, six in the fourth, and three in each of the last two innings. So they lead two four ten, sixteen to ten as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning here on the Cloud Sports Network. Again, that next game, technically the three thirty five game, it's the Dallas Fort Texas Force are the number eight seed, and the Long Beach Tricky Sticks are the number twenty five seed. You may have heard some folks at the end yelling, "Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up!" In theory, if the Yaz get out with time left on the clock, we would go to a seventh inning. I haven't heard a time check lately, but given that we had 13 minutes a couple, couple half innings ago, I would be surprised if that happened. Mm -hmm. Could lead to some interesting strategy. If they get two out very quickly and time hasn't expired, then sometimes you'll do something to get it out on purpose, step on the plate, strike out, etc. But my guess is they're going to start this uh, inning straight up trying to claw those six runs back. Uh, and we do have a time check. There's four minutes left. Nick Batesel leads off. First pitch to him. He goes the opposite way down the left field line, and the ball is a fair ball. Batesel, the ball is just going all the way to the corner. Batesel rounds second and heads to third. It'll be a triple. It's a leadoff triple to start the bottom of the sixth. And that'll bring up Cody Eden, the first baseman. Eden who has that ball to the pitcher for the last out of the third inning. And the next one. He swings and lifts one in the air to left center field. That ball will get down. A run will score at 16 to 11. Eden holds up at second base with a double. Eric Straker is one for three, one for two rather, singled walk, bounced to the shortstop. As DeWitt Myers moves into the on-deck circle, here is the next pitch to Straker, and that pitch is a ball, ball three.
and he walks. So the first three reach. 16-11 the score. DeWitt Myers the batter. He has singled and scored, hit a sacrifice fly to left center and fly to left. And worth remembering here, the Yaz can hit one more home run over the fence. There's a liner to the third baseman caught, and that's the second first down in the inning. Dallas Reed, the batter. Singled and scored, fly to left, line to the pitcher. <laughs> Not sure if it was momentum or intentional. Looked like the uh, third baseman there was trying to go over and tag the bag, but of course there's no force once you catch the ball. That's right. First pitch to Reed. is a strike called. On the base pass, Cody Eden at second and Eric Straker at first. Dallas Reed sing, uh, hits one to the short or the middle infielder. He bo They bobble the ball, and the force out is made at second base. I guess that play goes middle fielder to shortstop. On the play, Eden to third. Reed is safe at first. Straker is forced at second base for the second out. And that'll bring up Kobe Bilski. First pitch. Kobe Bilski has one of the home runs in this game. And I don't think I've heard the timer yet. I haven't either. So interesting choice. Bilski might just make an out here. Here's the next pitch to Kobe. Swung on and hit in the left field for a base hit. A run will score as Cody Eden scores. And on the play, Dallas Reed held at second base. 16-12. Rusty Leger, the batter. So tying run now in the on-deck circle. Uh, if Leger can get on, then that would bring that last home run into play. He swings and he hits one on the infield in foul territory, and the out is made, and that ends the sixth inning. And Two what we're hearing scored. is that there are 15 seconds left, which should mean we are going to a seventh inning. So now we hear, now we hear the timer is going off, but the out was made before the timer went off, so they will play the seventh inning. When I was not a coach, I really, really didn't like it when teams would waste time to finish the game to get out of it. Uh, kudos to the Rebels, didn't play any of those games. Nice to see, good competitiveness. And it does hurt, you know, with 15 seconds left to give them that one more inning, but let's see what happens. Top of the order for them in the seventh inning. They lead 16 to 12. And the left-handed batter stands in to, for the first pitch. So time is no longer an issue. First pitch to him is a pitch for a ball. And I'll there's admit, a, Rich, if you had tr told me they were going to get seven batters in in four minutes, I would have told you you were nuts. There's a grounder to second base on to first for the out. Nick Batesel on to Cody Eden, and that is the first out. And the batter will be the number 18. There's a line drive foul down the left field line. One ball, two strikes. Score is 16 to 12 in favor of the Rebels, who at one time trailed 9-2 and 10-4. There's a ground ball off the pitcher's glove and on into center field for a base hit. 
God, they've batted enough times that this was the fifth at bat for the uh, players at the top of the order. Trey, the batter, he is three for four today with three runs scored. And he swings and hits one beyond the third baseman and the shortstop's reach in that vacated hole. There'll be a play at third, maybe. Nope, the ball gets to the third baseman. Uh, catcher backing up on that is the uh, runner at thir- uh, first reached third base. And on the throw in, the runner at uh, first tray who hit the single reaches second base. So it is second and third with one out, and that'll bring up Gage. And interestingly, Rich, you mentioned the fifth at bat. Actually, both teams finished the sixth inning having gone through their lineup exactly four times. So the Yaz just leaving more runners on base, I guess. There is a foul ball down the left side. And the umpire going to the main bag to get more balls for his side pouches. I think the ball budget for this field has gone over what they intended. Right. Brian Joseph is in the on-deck circle. And the next one is lined to the oh, shortstop. Oh, oh. oh, he had it, and he dropped it. The, uh, the runner will be forced at second base, 6-4. It'll be an RBI on the force out as 18 comes across to score. 17-12. So getting an out on that was amazing no matter how you do it. But when he had that snow cone, if he had come down with it, they might have gotten two as far as the runners were moving on it. Brian Joseph swings and lifts one in the air to right field. Straker coming on, the second baseman ranging out, and he makes the catch. And that ends the inning. A big run scoring for the Los Angeles Rebels. So the Austin Yas need five to tie, six to win. Regardless of what happens, well, unless they come back with five, but this would be the last at-bat as time has expired. And who did you say we have in our next game, Joel? In our next game, we have the number eight Dallas, Texas Force against, I believe it's the number 22 Long Beach Tricky Sticks. A team that we saw earlier this morning. And so, as we mentioned, this game, even when we thought we were only going to get six inning it, innings in. We thought the next game would be a little late for its 335 start. What we will do at the end of this game, whatever it is, is stop our broadcast so that we can separate it from the next game, but then we will be back as quickly as we can get reset, as will, I'm sure, the Blues in the next team. Aaron Thompson, Josh Madeline, Mitchell Bussey. There's going to be a pitching change. 33 is coming in to pitch. Well, no, there's not a big thing. He was just taking his time getting to the mound. So he'll be in the circle. Because I thought there's no way Brian Joseph would ever pitch. And the first pitch to Thompson is hit out in the air to right field, and the catch is made. Out number one. Here's Josh Madeline. He walked in his first at-bat. He came in as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning. He takes a strike. And should we get to a tie, Rich, uh, we will use the international tiebreaker rules. There's a fly ball hit out into right field. And the right fielder makes the catch. He's made both outs here in the bottom of the seventh. And so this will be Mitchell Bussey. He has to do something. He has to get on to keep this game going. If he doesn't, It's a win for Los Angeles, but let's see what happens. And there's a fly ball hit out into left field. And that ball is out of here. It's a home run. And that is their last home run. So anything else over the fence other than a four-base whatever it was? Four-base award. award. (laughs) is going to be an inning ending out. So they get the run back that they surrendered in the top of the seventh. Uh, Nick Bates all the batter, and in the on-deck circle is Cody Eden. And the first pitch to Batesel is grounded to the shortstop, off his glove, and in the shallow left field for a base hit. It'll go as a single. Would have been a hard uh, play for him to make anyway. And Cody Eden followed by Eric Straker. 
So they're still alive. And the first pitch to Eden is a ball. Two and one. Strike call, two and two. And just to let you know, the winner of this game will be advancing. They will be playing at 440 ball. against the number one seed, the San Francisco Fury Unleashed. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to center field. Left center fielder or center fielder ranges over to his left, makes the catch, and that ends the ball game. They did get one run on the home run by Bussy, but that wasn't enough. Final score here in our first bracket game of the afternoon, 17 to 12 in favor of the Los Angeles Rebels. They advance. Now the Yas will play through the loser's bracket, and we are getting set for this next game the Los Long Beach Tricky Six and the Texas Force. But as Joel said, we're going to take a break and be back in just a few minutes here on the Cloud Sports Network.